Remember, Akshita was at his crew tracking all of those developments when India's very successful moon mission Chandrayaan-3 had uh, in fact ensured that the lander uh, make a soft landing and that too on the south pole of the moon. Akshita, given the success from last week, the fact is that there is enthusiasm, fervor and a lot of interest when it comes to missions of this nature. What's interesting is that this is a solar mission and also to tell our viewers like isro has been saying it isn't going to be very easy given that this is the sound that we are talking about in terms of our proximity and in terms of the difficulties of the mission isn't it very very true sneha and no mm. rest for our isro scientists you know they're already working right now on gathering all the data from rover pragyan but they're simultaneously also working on aditya l1 now if you're wondering what really l1 stands for it's the lagrange point which is essentially where the satellite is going to be based now uh, there is in fact detailed diagrams that isro has put out which shows the l1 point l2 l3 and l4 l1 comes right in between the earth and the sun so right in the middle of the sun is where this satellite will be based to constantly observe all the details that they need particles magnetic field all of that and largely how the sun influences the earth's weather patterns very important one that and also about coronal particles all of these details will be gathered this is very very different from the chandrayaan mission and there's no way really that you can compare the two because while chandrayaan 3 was all about touching down and the most complicated part was really ensuring a soft landing on the south pole of the moon remember the chandrayaan 3 traveled about 4 lakh kilometers meters to reach the moon in this case it's going to be a lot more of travel once it takes off on september 2nd we're talking about you know this particular point of l1 is about 1.5 million kilometers from earth so you can imagine how much really the satellite has to travel it's going to take a lot longer not just 40 days so that is something that isro has also confirmed it'll take them a lot more time to reach that particular point but this is also a huge deal and once of course they reach there they're not going to be trying to you know touch down anywhere or any of that which is seemingly impossible also on the sun surface having said that they're going to be stationed there on a halo orbit Uh, sneha so again different from what we saw with chandrayaan 3 which followed an elliptical orbit and through the entire time while it's stationed there at that particular point you're going to be seeing non stop 24 by 7 monitoring of the sun which is why the langrange one point has been chosen because then there's no eclipse no occultation that can really block your view of the sun so direct right bang in the middle of the sun is where they're going to be studying all necessary details research science about the solar uh, about really the solar surface about the sun as the first time that isro is actually going ahead and studying the sun in such close detail of course it's extremely crucial to understand weather patterns in india but uh, in the country and of course globally as well but beyond that also the magnetic field the kind of solar flares which are so often talked about all of that is something that isro hopes to also uh, greatly research into and dive into with this project talk to us a little about the other countries also who have in fact uh, akshita launch missions uh, to the sun essentially solar missions So interestingly Sneha you do have a lot of countries that have done this and many of them also choose to in fact deploy their satellites uh, at the L1 point because that is in fact the ideal viewing point L2 L3 which are vertically above and below the sun from there also they have many satellites that are viewing this but considering that this is the first time India is going to be going about with this kind of a satellite is crucial by itself it's not a first of any kind really considering that yes this has been done before by many countries many of them are constantly monitoring the sun which is why you very often see videos also come to the fore of these massive solar flames the moment they happen uh, in this particular case as far as isro's project is concerned uh, you know you're going to be seeing several payloads in the aditya l1 which is focusing on yes camera footage constantly but also tracking every single update with regards to coronal particles that are sent from the sun all of that also being sent through from isro it means that we'll have our own independent research essentially of the sun now